Welcome to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 246, and today's date is December 23rd, 2013, and the title of this episode is U.S. Pivots to Asia and Africa for the Upcoming War. And what do we know? We know the U.S. is encircling China. They have moved uh, missiles, they have moved warships, they've moved a stealth destroyer all to the Pacific, and they're setting up bases which encircle China. And we understand that China has set up an air defense zone and moved many of their military assets and ships into that region. And there was some type of conflict between uh, the Chinese and the, the U.S. warships where they almost collided, but it was a provocation by the U.S. to get the Chinese to do something. And the Chinese actually came out and said, it looked like the U.S. was trying to provoke us. What do we know in Africa? Well, we understand that France is down in Mali and Central Africa. They are moving their forces in. Why? Because they have a vast amount of natural resources, gold, uranium, oil, you name it, they're going to get it. And this is what the central bankers do. They move into the area. The U.S. has troops stationed in Italy for easy access into Africa. And just a couple days ago, the U.S. was evacuating all the people in Sudan because of the uprising and the fighting was starting to intensify. So they had to move the people out. And here we are already with Obama saying that he might be moving military forces into Sudan. And it's not if, it's pretty much when, because we know they're going to do it. And why are they going to do it? Well, the Chinese, they are pumping in billions upon billions of dollars into Africa and they are setting up the infrastructure in Africa. Kenya has become the clearinghouse for the Yuan, and all this is being taken place right now, and this is the battle. The battle will be held on the African front. The battle will be held in North Korea. The battle will be held in the Pacific, and we can see how this is all coming together and forming at this time. Now, let's get into the economic collapse news, and we... We're going to go out to the UK right now. Now, the UK youth unemployment um, is around 21%, and that's nearly about 1 million people. And they're having a very tough time. The youth, just like in every other country, is having a tough time. There's just no jobs out there. And this goes on to say that long-term unemployment is also rising. The number of workers aged 18 to 24 that they are unemployed uh, for over two years right now, and it's increasing. Uh, current levels of youth unemployment are predicted to cause widespread poverty in old age, as most youths can't afford retirement savings. And I see this happening here in the U.S. It's happening in Cyprus. It's happening in Greece. It's happening in Spain. It's happening in France. It's happening in Portugal. And it goes on and on and on. Even in Germany, uh, where they are... the they are also having the same problems because this is a widespread problem. It, the central bank is completely collapsing. The private Western Central Bank is collapsing, and we're seeing this spread all across Europe, and it's already here in the U.S., but uh, the, all the numbers are manipulated, and there is an illusion um, that they painted where people believe that everything is fine where it is not. Uh, and we're seeing right now in Cyprus, they're still under capital controls at this point, but the IMF was out there saying that Cyprus is completely on track, everything seems fine, uh, but paying down the debt may hamper growth for maybe a decade or so. And um, what's happening in Cyprus, they're headed down the same path as Greece. And we have to remember back to when Greece got their first bailout. And of course, Cyprus had a bailout and a bail-in and capital controls where people couldn't, can't still get their money out. And I mean, right now in Cyprus, uh, they're looking at 16.2% 16, uh, 16 uh, unemployment right now. And it is increased by 0.7%. And we have to just step back and look at Greece right now, what's been happening. When Greece first got its bailout, the news was out there and they reported something like this. Um, we strongly support the economic program announced today by the government of Greece. The steps being taken, while difficult, are necessary to restore confidence in the Greek 
uh, economy and to secure a better future for the Greek people. The program is unprecedented in the scope of the national effort required, as well as in the scale of the financial support. Um, there, uh, there's about 110 billion euro being provided by the euro area countries and IMF. Uh, we are confident that, the, that Greece will rise to the challenge. And at the time that this was made, in the headlines, we saw hopes for Greek debt progress lift world stocks. And what we saw from that point on was nothing like they said. Everything was declining, degrading, um, completely falling apart. They needed one bailout, two bailout, three bailout. And, you know, since this time, Greek salaries in the public sector sector have been cut up to about 50%. Wages in the private sector have been reduced by 40% and pensions have been cut up to 45%. From 2010 to, to uh, 2013, the tax on the average income has increased by 25%, while the income of most people has gone up by over 29%. Taxation of real estate has increased by 552%. The value added tax was raised from 19 to 23%. And numerous other indirect taxes have been added or gone up. In 2014, revenue from tax increases imposed on businesses is expected, is, is expected to increase by 137.2%. So we can see what is happening in Greece. It's going to happen in Cyprus. It's going to happen in France. It's going to happen in Portugal. It's going to happen in Spain. And it's going to spread throughout Europe. It's going to spread to Australia, Canada, and again, US. And they understand this. They know that this is a huge, huge problem. They cannot control it at this point. And this is why the central bankers are making a move into many different countries, trying to get the natural resources, trying to get these countries on uh, the central banking system. They tried with the Ukraine but failed because they need more and more countries to take on and uh, sell their natural resources using... Uh, either the euro or the US dollar, and they need to spread the debt. They need more people taking on debt, and they need more of this currency in circulation. Now, here in the US, and I've said this before, we've seen last year where unemployment was around 8, 7.9%, something like that. Now we see it down to 7%. So during the year of 2013, more and more people have been getting jobs. Right? That's what the government's been telling us. So in our minds, what should be happening? Well, more people should be buying real estate, more people should be buying cars, and retail should be booming because more people have jobs, more people have disposable income, and everything should be perfect. But we are here now in the Christmas season, and they're reporting that the Christmas season isn't going as well as they thought. And right now, U.S. consumers shop less on the final weekend before Christmas, despite deeper discounts, the latest sign of how difficult a season this is turning out to be for retailers. Um, analytics firm Retail Next estimated on Sunday the U.S. retail sales fell by a mid-single-digit percentage at a brick-and-mortar stores on Friday and Saturday, two of the four most important shopping days of the season compared with the same days last year. Now, I ask you, how can this be if unemployment is down and more people are working? There's millions of more people working now. How can this be? Why? Because this is an illusion. Just like the illusion that when uh, December 28th hits and these people, 1.3 million people, fall off the unemployment, uh, extended unemployment insurance, they will no longer be counted as unemployed. But as we know, they are still unemployed they're just not receiving the benefits. They're not counted, so the unemployment rate goes down from 7 to about, what, 6.2%, because I think J.P. Morgan, one of the analysts said, if uh, they don't extend the unemployment, the unemployment rate's going to drop around 0.8% or so. So that's going to bring us to about 6.2% or something like that. Perfect, perfect, perfect for the Fed to do full-on taper, which is never going to happen because we're going to see some type of an event that stops everything in its tracks and all of a sudden the, Fed, the Federal Reserve will need to, 
to increase QE and really push it into overdrive. Now, we understand that Target had a problem. They had their credit card uh, system breached, and they were stolen, and it was millions of people. And um, Target sales now over the weekend have slipped uh, 3 to 4% compared um, with last year. And we can see how this is all starting to play out now. I don't know if this was done on purpose, which it probably was, but they... The powers that be already knew that this, cre this Christmas season was not going to go well. They understood that this is a complete illusion. The government knows this. The Fed knows this. And the only way to cover this up is to create an incident, an event, where they can blame this. Now, they really can't blame it on weather uh, because we've been having, you know, the weather's been okay. So they, they're going to have to push that aside. So what they did was they created this event where Target was hit with this breach and now people are afraid to go out and use their cards because they're afraid their cards are going to be stolen. And this whole fiasco is going to be the cause of why retail sales have plummeted during this Christmas season. But we already knew from the beginning that this Christmas season was not going to go well. We already knew that retailers were closing their doors way before this. We already knew that the disposable income of people of the people um, was not there. We already knew that people were unemployed, underemployed, and the government um, unemployment numbers were, co were completely manipulated and fake. We already knew that the unemployment rate is between 25 and 30 percent at this time. So we know this is a bunch of BS, basically. Now, they are reporting that consumer confidence surges most in over four years, and we are seeing this, and we've seen this before. In uh, 2007, consumer confidence hit all-time new highs, which is kind of mean meaningless because they're making everyone believe that everything is fine and everything is, is going perfectly. We In 2007, everyone thought their homes were going to continually rise and they're going to hit new highs and new highs and new highs and never come down. People were taking out equity loans. They were feeling good. They were getting themselves into more debt and everything was fine. People had jobs. There were some layoffs, but people had jobs. Here, the economy is a complete illusion. People believe that the unemployment is coming down. They believe that housing is in a rebound. They believe what the government is telling them. So confidence is surging right now. And when we see this happen, it happened in 2000. It happened in 2007. And now we're seeing it happen in 2013. A year later, what happened? The stock market completely crashed. Now, from all this confidence and from uh, the retailers showing us that it's not going to be a great uh, Christmas, um, we understand that this illusion is an illusion because the U.S. savings rate slides as personal incomes below expectations and real disposable income growth tumbles. And this is from Zero Hedge, and they're reporting that the second month in a row Income, which rose a modest 0.2%, missed expectations of 0.5%. And U.S. consumers dug even deeper into their meager savings. And in, no in November, the savings rate dropped once more, sliding from 4.5% to 4.2%. Because people are not making the same income, so they have to go into their savings. We're seeing this in the U.K. also, where people are going into their savings to, get, to make ends meet. And this goes on to say that real disposable income rose by just 0.1% in November following a negative 0.2% drop the prior month. As a result, and as, the, as um, this chart on this page shows, the annual growth in real disposable income has once again resumed its downward trajectory. And at the current pace of declines, it will likely turn negative as soon as next month. And we are seeing this. We understand why this is happening, and again, this is all because GDP, inflation, unemployment are all manipulated. The stock market is pumped up to make people believe that everything is fine. If you look at the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, they are hitting all-time new highs. They are going to continue 
continually go higher. Gold is going to continually be suppressed because we can't let on that something is wrong here. If gold were to rise right now, people would be asking why, and they would believe that the economy is not doing well and the dollar was losing value. So what they do is they continually smack it down to make everyone believe the economy is doing well. And we saw this in 1929. We saw this in 2000. We saw this in 2008. The stock market hit all-time new highs. As soon as this happens, the market completely crashes. And uh, in a couple other reports ago, there was a graph uh, where Zero Hedge mapped it out uh, to 1929. And we're going to reach that peak height if we map it to 1929, because it, it actually matches up pretty darn perfectly. By January 14th, we reach the peak. And what happened after that was a complete collapse of the stock market. Now, Obamacare, in the dark of the night, like he does everything, decided to make deep cuts to Medicare. Obama administration has quietly dealt yet another blow, this time striking millions of the nation's most vulnerable seniors. Specifically, the Obama administration has decided to deeply cut funding for the Medicare program's home health benefit as a way to help pay for Obamacare. 14% cut in Medicare home health program and this is going to hurt the seniors the impact that Obamacare's Medicare cut will, will have on seniors families and small businesses is widely projected to be extremely severe at this time and he did this at, it was like Friday night or something and uh, where no one was paying attention and uh, this just passed through he also made a symbolic gesture and signed up to Obamacare, not with the TVs, not with a big presentation. It was done silently. It was a symbolic gesture. He signed up for the bronze plan, but it doesn't really count because he gets his medical insurance uh, from the military, uh, I think, uh, part of the government. And that policy is about a hundred times better than the bronze plan so he really didn't sign up for anything it was symbolic in nature and he finally did it but he didn't give up anything because why would he want the crappy Obama the Obamacare health plan when he has a really great health care plan now in California in Salinas California uh, the mil the police department is um, very excited because they got a military style armored car. Uh, we're seeing this happen a lot across the United States. In many of the local law enforcement agencies, they are receiving these vehicles free from the military. DHS is giving them grants and they're receiving them, painting them over. And um, right now, this is all part of DHS's plan and the government's plan to get every single law enforcement under the direction of DHS. They want every single law enforce, enforcement controlled by DHS. So when the collapse comes, uh, they are in control. And this is why all these local municipalities are receiving these armored tanks when they really don't need them. And the citizens are very angry and they're a little worried about this. And some of them wrote on uh, their Facebook page saying, I'm very concerned about the militarization of our police force wrote one commenter, one look at this picture, I see a military tactical assault vehicle with four SWAT team members attired in military style uniforms. And um, we are very nervous about this and we do not need it in our area. And I agree, there is absolutely no reason for these small towns needing armored vehicles with, and we know for a fact that the Boston PD is getting AR-15s and we're going to see this all spread across the US because they are now taking the entire local law enforcement, may federalize them f and uh, supplying them with weapons, bullets, tanks, you name it, because the DHS is going to have their own military force to control the public, to go into the public, to gather those people who are a threat to the U.S. government. And you can see, you can see the picture forming right now. You can see what is happening. 
Now, as we know, a judge was out there saying that the NSA surveillance was completely unconstitutional, and the panel came out and say that the NSA spying did not thwart any type of uh, terrorist attack, and uh, all they see is that they are spying on all Americans, they're spying on government officials, they're, sp they're spying on Supreme Court judge judges, they're, they're spying on um, foreign dignitaries, they're spying on foreign uh, countries and the people there, and right now we know what's going to happen. The White House is no way in the world going to let the NSA spying monster go. They are going to keep it intact because they need it. They need it for social profile. They need it to understand what everyone is doing. Just like in Nazi Germany, they knew they read everyone's mail. They listened to everyone's phone calls. They knew what people were doing. So right now, the Obama administration has filed papers to prevent a federal judge from issuing a ruling on whether the government's warrantless surveillance programs are constitutional. And we already know they're unconstitutional. They are blocking them. They don't want them to go further. And believe me, they're going to use their NSA surveillance on these judges to blackmail them. And all of a sudden, you will see the White House get their way and the NSA surveillance system will go forward and this will not end. Now, NYPD's Kelly uh, said the stop and frisk can never be eliminated, and of course it can. In every big city, they need this because when the collapse comes, they can't abide by the Constitution. They need to stop people on the street, just like the Germans did, and search them, find out where they're going. They can't have the Constitution blocking their ability to do what they need to do to control the people. And the outgoing New York Police Commissioner Ray Kelly insist insisted Monday that the controversial stop and frisk policies can never be eliminated. I will, it will not be eliminated, I can assure you. So it's going to be a practice that will continue. And this is what Ray Kelly is saying. Okay, now we know that Obama and the White House is controlled by the central bankers. We understand the central bankers pretty much control everything. And we understand that they need to get the natural resources of each country. So they use the U.S. military to move in and control these areas. And they've done it in the Middle East, and now they're pivoting to Africa. And we understand this. And right now, because what happened in Sudan, U.S. President uh, Barack Obama says Washington will take action if needed after U.S. forces were attacked in South Sudan. One of the aircraft was shot at. And... Um, we absolutely understand it's not if, but when. Forces are probably already on their way. Forces are ready to move into Sudan to control and occupy the area. China is already there. They're supporting the rebels. Uh, the U.S. government is now moving in. Same thing with France. They have Central Africa and Mali that they're controlling. And uh, France wants the Eurozone to um, have their forces move into Africa because this is the next area they need to control because it's rich with petroleum, it's rich with gold. Mali, I think, is the third largest gold-producing country. Um, so they're in Mali. They have uranium. They have diamonds. They have copper. And they are there to get the natural resources just like in the Middle East. Now, Saudi Arabia and the other Gulf nations in the area have been putting together their own military force, and they have about 100,000 combat troop uh, uh, strong, ready forces to go here. And Saudi Arabia has announced, as the kingdom tries to secure its force in the region, following a rift with the U.S. over Washington's reapproachment with uh, um, Iran, and they are creating this 100,000-member force. And uh, Saudi Arabia and its Gulf neighbors, United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Oman, Bahrain, uh, Qatar, at the Gulf Cooperation Council in Kuwait City, agreed to create the Joint Military Command and tasked the Joint Defense Council to implement measures. And uh, this means the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has no choice but to become more assertive in international affairs, more determined than ever to stand up for the genuine stability for the region so desperately uh, needed. And they're saying this because 
they cannot depend on the U.S. Egypt has already been making deals with Russia uh, to buy uh, military uh, weapons and to have aid. They're already letting uh, the Russia to have access to the Alexandria port. Saudi Arabia is making deals with Russia and China uh, because they know the U.S. dollar is collapsing, so they're hedging their bet right now. Now, we understand the U.S. is uh, encircling China with the pivot to Asia, and right now China is creating the string of pearl strategy. Um, right now, China, they're modernizing the military, um, and they are doing this in a method called the string of pearls. And China says they need to do this to sustain its economic growth, and it depends increasingly on its external supply of energy, more raw materials, and food. So the development of sea line of, uh, of communication is vitally important as more than 80% of China's trade go through the sea. And what they're doing right now, what we see in the Pacific right now, we see that uh, China's Navy, they have about 27 destroyers, 47 frigates, 21 submarines, and um, the United States has 50 warships and 350 aircraft. The Chinese have 1,300 fighters, 600 bombers. The United States has one aircraft carrier with 90 aircraft on there, one command ship, two guided missile cruisers, seven guided missile destroyers, and three submarines. Uh, the Chinese also have 50, uh, 500 surface-to-air missiles and anti-missile uh, 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 missile systems to block uh, incoming missiles. And they also have plans for three aircraft carrier battle groups. That This is China right now. So we can see on both sides they are building up their military forces in the area. And the first pearl is located at the, I'm going to try to pronounce this, Hainan Islands in South China. The Chinese have already upgraded the naval base and military facilities in this area. The second pearl is the port of Hambonatato in Sri Lanka, despite much objection from India. The third pearl is located at the Chittagong port in Bangladesh. Fourth is the Woody Island located 300 miles east of the Paracel Archipelago. An airstrip has been upgraded for this purpose. And the following reasons why China has putting so much importance in this area and creating this string of pearl, it is to counter U.S. forces from Guam and Hawaii in case of future confrontation. Uh, they are maintaining a strategic positioning of the Pacific. And basically what they're saying is the development of the string of pearls can be seen as part of China's ambitious plan to consolidate and tighten its grip on global power projection. This whole game plan can be seen as part of a strategy that derives from the centuries-old Chinese board game called Wei Qi, also known as G.O. in the West, or as, I guess, Go in the West. The objective of this game is to move as many pieces of his stone, either black or white, towards the opponent's side. In a way, it surrounded the opponent with many scattered pieces and then consolidates his position in one or two areas where it will be used for the final push to finish off his opponent. So we can see what is happening right now. China is positioning their military assets. United States, Japan, and other Asian nations are uh, positioning their military assets. China is now in Africa, and they are positioning themselves. The central bankers, U.S. government, France, Eurozone are moving into Africa, just like the Chinese, and positioning their military assets. So we can see this entire pivot to Africa and Asia are definitely happening right now because they are building and getting ready for war. Now, is war coming tomorrow? Most likely not. But eventually, we have to think back to World War II of how long this war spanned. And this is going to go on for quite a while until the war gets ramped up in a way that everyone starts to pay attention of like, oh my God, we are in World War III. Now, China is planning a 110,000 ton super aircraft carrier to rival U.S. naval power. And um, 
Following Washington's move to increase its military footprint in Asia, China has declared it is building a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier of a size to compete with the mightiest in the U.S. naval fleet. In September, the U.S. Navy's first combat ship, USS Freedom, arrived in Singapore to start its eighth-month deployment in Southeast Chi, so Southeast Asia uh, Sea. So we can see what is happening right now, and um, you know. The U.S. moves ships in. Asia has to build more ships that are the same size or better than the U.S. ships, and they are ramping up their fleet as we speak right now. Now, South Korea um, and China dust off a contingency plan for North Korea's sudden collapse. South Korea is ready to execute a long plan contingency measure including options to send troops to exercise milita military control of the North when and if a sudden change occurs there. Well, already we've seen uh, the president of North Korea's, uh, his uncle, he executed him. So they believe that things are changing right now in North Korea. And this uh, plan is known as Op Plan 5029. The contingency measure has been jointly worked out by the U.S. and South Korea. Several think tanks, such as the U.S.-based Institute of Peace, um, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, have reported that China also has a contingency plan for North Korea's sudden collapse. So here we are, the South Korea, the U.S., have a plan to get into North Korea. China also has some type of plan to get into North Korea. So now we have the pivot on uh, pivot in Asia and the string of pearls going on in uh, the Pacific uh, a Asian area. We have Africa where the Chinese are supplying weapons and uh, the United States, France, Eurozone, central bankers are all moving into Africa. We see plans already formulated for the collapse of North Korea where China and South Korea, U.S. are moving into that area. So we see three hot spots right now that will move war forward. Now the US is building secret labs to enhance nukes to prepare for World War III. The United States is planning to build two new underground plutonium production labs that will expand plutonium production for the next decade. The Senate uh, two days ago voted to authorize the creation of two new huge secret underground plutonium production labs that will expand plutonium production. And this is to create more nuclear weapons. And again, I've, I've heard this in many places where eventually World War III will end in a nuclear strike. Now, we understand that the Fed is, well, has mentioned tapering in January. They're going to reduce it by $10 billion, five for bond purchasing, five for toxic real estate purchasing, which is minimal. This is being set up for a false flag event. And we understand that this event is going to consist of a cyber attack. It might consist of a chemical weapon attack and a dirty bomb type of nuclear uh, explosions around the country. And I believe that this false flag event will not happen in one location. It will probably happen in many different locations. And we see they are ramping up for this. And we know we, we completely understand that the Fed cannot taper. Because if they do taper, the entire economic model collapses right in front of our eyes because they are the market. They are pumping in all this money into the banks to push the markets up and they've been doing a fantastic job of just pushing the markets up. Forget about the rest of the economy. The rest of the economy is falling apart just like in Europe. The economies are completely decimated. The U.S. economy is completely falling apart. People just don't realize it yet. We have to go back to 2008 before the stock market crash, the economy was completely declining. It, it was, it was, unemployment was starting to skyrocket, but no one noticed it because of the illusion 
of the stock market. The illusion that the government said everything is fine. The illusion that the Fed said they're, they're not predicting a recession any time this year. The illusion that they said the subprime um, securities is contained. The illusion is just that, an illusion. And we are seeing the same thing right now. Now, they cannot let the market completely collapse. They need to have a way of stopping it and stop all trading. So right now, and I believe, I have to remember, and I think back that they proposed this once before, and now they are actually doing this. And I think I even mentioned this in one of my reports. I'd have to go back and take a look. That the New York Stock Exchange is now implementing a kill switch. The Intercontinental Exchange Group unit has filed a plan with regulators to offer firms that trade on the New York Stock Exchange a kill switch that, cut, that could cut off trading if uh, preset levels were breached. And this is going to be used for the event because they do not want the stock market to completely collapse because what they're going to do is the Fed and the U.S. government want to pump the markets up again one more time here. And the only way to do this is to like completely cut off the stock exchange uh, from collapsing. So they need some type of switch. So they are getting the kill switch will, which will allow them to do this. Because we need to remember the, the Fed wants to pump up QE. Why? Because when the United States collapses, they're going to blame this on another country with these false flag events. Of course, there are going to be bank holidays. There's going to be bail-ins. Yeah, there are going to be capital controls. You'll not be able to get your money. Um, as the market tumbles, they will stop it at a certain point. They will kill it. And the government and the Fed will come out saying, oh, look at this, China, North Korea, Iran, Syria, any country that they mention, all the ones that are the hot spots for war, they will you know, bring them out and say they're responsible for this. And he, us, you know, the, the government of the United States, with the help of the Fed, are going to help by pushing and creating more QE dollars for the banks to help them out. They are implementing bail-ins right now because the Dodd-Frank Act will not allow that... Uh, not allow the government to bail them out. So what's going to happen right now is we're going to take a measly percentage from everyone's account to maintain and help the economy from collapsing. And we'll probably only take 8 to 10% of your money. Anyone who has over whatever it is, $250,000 or $100,000, uh, and that's what we're going to do at this point. But we're going to keep everyone's accounts frozen because we can't have people taking the monies. Or uh, we need to cut that off from the internet because we are still seeing attacks coming in and we don't want more money being siphoned off. So we're protecting everyone in the United States. And the Fed will come out saying, you know, we did our calculation and what we're seeing is we're going to have to really pump this up by 200 or $250 billion a month. And again, since everything is collapsing around the country and other foreign nations are selling their treasury bonds and not accepting U.S. dollars, People are foreclosing on, foreclosing on their houses left and right because jobs cannot be found because we already know the illusion has fallen apart and more companies are letting people go because they've lost all their investments because the stock market has come down. It is complete havoc. Uh, uh, companies will be decimated. People will be crying. You'll be, see suicides will be on the rise. It will be a complete disaster. You'll see rioting in the streets. The president will declare martial law. He'll do this to say that um, he is trying to maintain um, the status quo of the United States. He's going to tell DHS to take uh, the reins on this, to uh, implement their procedures and to start mobilizing the local police uh, law enforcement. Those people who do not have jobs, who are out in the streets, need to start reporting to the FEMA camps where we'll be able to house you, clothe you, feed you, and we need you to move into that area. Um, during this false flag event, depending on where it happens, um, p uh, children in schools will probably be bused saying, for your safety, we're going to uh, send you to one of these places where your parents can pick you up, and this is a way to lure 
more parents to this area um, because of rioting on the streets and because of mass hysteria. Um, the United States has just just issued a law that says um, all weapons need to be turned in at this time, just like they did in Hurricane uh, Katrina and in other places. And we need everyone to start turning in their weapons because we are afraid for your safety. And a lot of people will start to do it. A lot of people will report to the camps. Children will be bussed off to the camps. And all this time, the government will be starting war with the country because the president will be out there saying now China, North Korea, Iran, Syria, whatever country it is at this time, they have collapsed the American economy. We cannot stand by and let them do this. We need to go and strike these, this country. And the, the people of the U.S. will say, yes, hurrah, we need to do this. I've lost my life savings. I lost my job. And again, this is how this will most likely play out. And if you haven't started to prepare, I would start to prepare because what we're going to see in the streets, what we're going to see happen here is going to be horrific. We're going to see people crying, struggling, not understanding what is going on. Think about people who've just lost all of their money, all of their savings, just lost their jobs. They have nowhere to go. They don't know how they're going to get food. The government cannot help them at this time. DHS, DHS has been you know, sent out. Local enforcement are trying to make, uh, maintain control in the streets, but it is very difficult, especially in the inner cities. Um, where there is so many people, and this is why they've created these draconian laws of disarming the people in the cities with, uh, like in New York, where you're only ha allowed to have a certain weapons with a certain number of uh, bullets in, in the gun. And if you have more than that, you have to turn them in. And most of the people are complying with this. Um, we're allowed to stop you on the strike and frisk you, and they'll take the guns right off of you. We're seeing this, and in every one of these big cities, these are the laws they are setting up in New Jersey. Uh, Chris Christie set up the law that people can't get guns if they're on the list, um, but you don't know how to get on or off the list, or even if you're on the list, you don't know if you are, and you can't get a gun permit. So they are cracking down everywhere. Um, if you notice, um, Chicago is a gun-free zone. New York is a gun-free zone. Many places in New Jersey are gun-free, California, um, and many, many other cities are gun-free zones because this is where the population is. This is going to be the most difficult area to control. The outskirts are not going to be as difficult, and this is why if you are living in the city, um, as many people have said, you should probably start moving out of the city and into a suburban or further out um, to be safe from this type of action. Listen, everyone. Thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially prepared. Thanks a lot.